allies are in, so that's great. Let's add more allies because I didn't add a check to see how many I could add. This is just absolute chaos. And before we jump into the code, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you get a notification when I upload. Otherwise, you're not going to get the next part before everyone else. You're going to be that first person you want to type in first in the comments. Well, this is what you're going to have to do. All right, so here we are in the project file from part seven. To start this off, let's go and create the ally object. Now, this object is very similar to the enemy. So let's just duplicate that guy. Minor differences. Um, obviously the target's gonna be different. Um, also, I think while we're dealing with allies and enemies, we can also randomize their properties so they could behave very similar to the way we select a, a plane that has unique properties. We can also make some enemies weaker, some allies stronger, and we get that kind of thing. Gives it a bit more variety. So now that we've duplicated the enemy, we have the ally. Let's go into the create event. Here where it says target is object player, we actually wanna change this to instance nearest. Nearest to the origin of type object enemy. Now we don't technically need to do this here because as soon as the step event kicks off, we do it again. Um, so so there's that, but you know, it's always nice to just uh, give it an initial target. Otherwise when it spawns, we'll see it kind of flick between the two, um, depending on how fast the rotation speed is, that can be noticeable. And then also the type is going to be ally. This is important for shooting. We obviously don't want to shoot down our allies and we don't want them to shoot each other down. Uh, next, let's go into the step event. Here, where we're saying if it's not redirect, um, if we're colliding with an enemy, we're gonna say, well, colliding with an ally, then we want to redirect. Otherwise our target, and we can grab this again here. Let's update our target over there. And one other thing that I want to actually do here is we only want the allies to be alive for 15 to 20 seconds. Then we want them to disengage and fly outside of the of the room and then destroy themselves. So this is supposed to be some sort of special ability because the game is basically us versus the world. So I'm going to introduce a variable called, um, let's just say global.alliesactive. And we only want it to do things such as detect if it's colliding with um, with a friend or another ally and finding a target if it's active. So once we create the allies, there's gonna be a little timer. That timer is gonna tick down. While they are active, they're gonna engage with, um, with the enemies. As soon as that timer reaches zero, then they're gonna disengage, fly off outside of the screen, and that'll be that. So if they're active, they can do what normal, what the enemy would do, but in this case, from the perspective of an ally, if they're not, um, active, then we're going to tell them to, to target X and target Y to position off the map. Oh, minus 10, minus 10 is okay. If we want, we can get more intelligent and just tell them to find their closest out of room coordinates and just go for that. But for now, let's just take them to the, the top left. Okay, so this is telling me that allies active doesn't exist, which it doesn't, not just yet. Let's see what else we need to do in this object. Alarm zero, this is the one that says if it needs to shoot at the player. So obviously it's not the player anymore. This is object enemy. That's all we need to do here. Then what we've got for the collision object it's saying if alive and other not owner is not equal to type. Now we can't have this statement anymore because there's a different type. There's not just a player and an enemy. There's now a player and ally and an enemy. So we, we have to kind of be more specific about this. So I'm gonna go into right click. I'm gonna say inherit event. And for the event inherited, I'm actually going to take that if check that we had on the parent and bring it up here. So this is where I'm gonna say, well, if, um, if I'm alive and the owner, so that's the bullet, is not equal to type and the owner is not equal to player, then we're gonna go and fire off the event inherited. So yes, if I'm alive, if the bullet coming towards me isn't my own or one of my types, so if it's not another ally and it's not the player's bullet, then we'll in, it will inherit the event, which will invariably reduce health and such, which means we need to go into the parent, which is object plane, and we need to modify object bullet to remove this if check, because now the children are doing that check themselves and whether they need to inherit this event or not. Another thing is the parent controlled, I think if it if the plane was shot down to, to recreate the enemy somewhere, now we don't wanna do that. Let's find out where that happened. Here we go. So this was saying, if we're alive, do all this stuff. If we're not alive, reduce the scale, um, you know, spin out of control a little. And this says, okay, well, if you've spun out of control a certain amount and your X scale is really tiny, then let's just say you've hit the deck 
In that case, we'll reset the plane. Now we don't want to do this if we're an ally. Allies get shot down, and then that's just that's just it. So if object index is not equal to object ally, then we'll reset the plane. So enemies always respawn. Okay, so next up, let's go and spawn these allies. We go to object player. Let's add a key press. I'm gonna say enter, I'm not using it yet. Ultimately, what do we wanna to get to as our end goals? We want to be able to get a certain amount of kills, get special abilities and use those abilities such as cool allies could be, could be a neat one. But just to test this off, let us just initiate that process based off of a key press being enter. So I want to randomize so that we can uh, create some unique variables. Let's say we're going to spawn four of the allies. Let's say uh, random X and random Y. Let's put them somewhere randomly on the map. Instance create layer uh, random x random y uh, instances layer object ally. Very good. This also means that global allies active is true, and our timer is going to be alarm one. We're not using alarm one. Very good. Let's say twenty seconds, so we can get a bird of chaos in there. If this is too long or too short, we can always change the variable here. And this is supposed to be one. Let's go and create alarm one. Here we're just setting global, whoopsie, allies active equals to false. Very straightforward. Which then, because of the allies step code, we'll get into here. It'll then say, okay, we're disengaging. Our target X is now out of the map. Our target Y is now out of the map. Let's go and uh, let's go and do that. So they'll fly away. Speaking of that, we should probably go into the ally object itself and just give it a, an outside room event instance destroy. Simple as that. We need to make sure that when we change the collision with bullet, ah, see here. Okay, we need to inherit all these guys in the same way. If alive and other dot owner is not equal to type, we should also say here as we did with the other guy. Where was it? Was it the ally? It's basically this line repeated over here. If we're alive and the owner of the bullet is not us, and the owner of the bullet is not an ally, then we'll take damage. I want to now be able to differentiate between friend and foe. So we're gonna to go to the parent object plane. We're gonna go into the draw event. So right now we just draw self. If we're alive, then we're gonna draw the health bar. But also I wanna say, if object index equals object ally, we need that. Else if uh, object index equals object enemy. So we got, those guys identified, draw, set, color. Uh, let's see, allies are gonna be blue. I like that red versus blue kind of vibe. And enemies are going to be red. And I'm gonna say draw text, nothing too fancy here. Um, let's just say origin plus 55. So that'll give it a bit of an offset so we can see it's not overlapping with the sprite. Friend. And let's copy this guy, put it there and say enemy. So now we'll be able to tell the difference between friends and foes, especially when things get a little crazy. Let's also go to the enemy, just make sure, ah, object bullet, we need to keep inheriting this event in the same way. So we go to object play, I can just grab this from here, grab the whole thing, object bullet, sorry, enemy. Inherited event, and then here we say not equal to enemy. So ally and player bullets will do damage to the enemy. If we go to player, enemy and obviously other player bullets will do damage to the player, but there's only one player, so we don't worry about that too much. 
I mentioned also as a bonus, we wanted to spice up the variables of the enemies and we might as well do the allies too. So in the creative event, we've got, you know, some fixed HP rotation speed. That's not too great for me. I think we want to, let's add some variety. I know our player selected it has variety. So let's do the same for our enemies. We're going to say HP. Oh, we can actually grab this. You know what we're going to do? If we go to choose, is it choose one of these rooms? There we go. This stuff. Speed, HP, all those guys. Let's steal that. Let's go over here where the randomizer is. Okay, let's get our sprite index at the top. These all use randomization, so this randomize here was well placed. We've got sprite index. Uh, let's see, we've got speed, so let's replace that guy. HP, let's replace that guy. Rotation speed, let's replace that guy. Shoot speed, replace that guy. Brilliant. Okay. Bring all of those together. Let's give them a nice little copy. Let's go to ally. And let's go here and paste. Nice. Is that it? I think that's it, guys. I think the ally inherits enough from the plane to know what it does. Um, then it overrides any events and, and targets to know that it's similar to a player but has no control from the user. When the player taps the enter key, we'll create some of these guys. What we got here, random X. Random X not being used. Is that true? I think that's not true. What is this guy saying? Oh, that's a typo. There we go. It's a good thing we checked. That'll then activate the allies. It'll create four allies. And uh, when those allies are created, they'll be given a target. They'll randomize. So they'll have a random uh, sprite. They'll have random speed, hit points, rotation speed, shoot speed. So some of them will be better than others. The timer also kicks off with that enter press. And after, let's see, what does it say? After 20 seconds, we'll disable allies, which means according to their step event, they'll head off the map and that'll be that. So let's save this up and let's play. Let's see what happens. I'm very eager to see if this will explode. Okay, because things could get a little chaotic, let's go for, let's see, this is the fastest plane. Shooting delay to five. We want the smallest delay. That is an 18 or oh, 27, that's horrible. Maybe we go for this guy. He is a little slower, but the shooting delay, check this out, is quite a lot less. That guy's got more hit points. Oh, okay, we're gonna go for green. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly around for five seconds. We can do everything we need. Our health is a little low. There's an enemy, see, so we see enemy. Let's push enter. Oh goodness, we're getting shot at already. Oh, I'm not fast enough. Hmm, I wonder, are those guys able to shoot themselves? Like, our allies are in, so that's great. Let's add more allies, because I didn't add a check to see how many I could add. This is just absolute chaos. Uh, we better we better fix that, because that, that's no good. I want to see if they all fly away after the amount of time. Oh dear, are we going to get shot down? Oh, we're alive again. Okay, come on, it must be the end of the 20 seconds. Oh, but every time I push enter, it's going to reset it. Ah, oh, shoot. Ah, oh, shoot. There's no way I can do this. I just want to stay alive long. Okay, they are. They're disengaging. You see that? They've all flown away. If we travel up, we might be able to catch up with them. I'm not sure. Okay, it looks like that worked. I just want to double check that these guys can't shoot each other. Yeah, it seems to be fine. That's perfect. Oh, I'm going to get wrecked. <laughs> okay, so well, that, that about, that about does it. I'm actually going to close this down. And I want to go to... <laughs> Object player, because we can't we can't allow that. That's ridiculous. Oh, no. Enter pressed. Here I want to just say if uh, if not. Uh, let's go. Here. Come on. If uh, if not that, then then we'll do it. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with like forty allies. But it was quite fun though to see how many could just manage on the screen at one time. It seemed to be okay. If we created more enemies, we could really go ham with it. Let's try that out now. So this time, oh, we got a speed 13. Look at this, 13 speed, nearly full health, uh, reasonable rotation, but look at that, zero nine, that's gonna be fast. Oh, look at that. Okay, let's bring in some allies. Oops, we got an error. Okay, so it's not set, global allies active. Ah, oh, cause we're using not, you see that. So what we got to say, is actually in our room choose on creation of our game we can put it in here or we can put it in the room world actually let's go room world because then at least the code is 
is encapsulated with where it's used. I mean, even though it is global um, equals false, we'll just initialize that. Easy. Okay, let's go back into it. All right. Oh, we're not going to have that guy now. That was super fast. Ah, oh, wait, here's a dude. Ah, oh, he's super slow. Ah, oh, okay, we'll just go for this dude. Oh, that's horrible. Okay, let's wait for all our enemies and we'll bring in some allies. There, I've hit enter. Where are they? I need help. I need help, allies. Oh, where are the allies? Oh, here they are. Here they come. They're coming in from the right. That's great. Okay, now we need to just dodge the bullets. If I push enter, I'm just going to spam enter. Notice it won't work. We shouldn't see any new allies come in. Oh, I'm so going to get shot down. Ugh. There they go. They're flying off. They're flying off. Let's see if we can go left. We need to add some sort of mini-map so we can see where we are. Okay, I think they've I think they've flown off, which means allies should be false. Let's hit enter again. Okay, we've tapped enter. Here come the allies. This is great. This is just absolutely wonderful. Look at that. They're coming in. They can't shoot each other down. They are helping me out because I'm super slow. Oh, I've just got to survive while they're around. Now, the enemies do respawn. The allies do not. But the enemies, as you can see around here at the bottom, they're having their little dogfight. They're in a little dogfight because the enemies will go for... Will they actually? Did we check if the enemies also go for... Allies? Let's double check. So if we go to an enemy, let's see... Hmm. hmm. So they only go for the players. We do need to actually change that because we want the enemies to also go for the allies. How do I do that is the question. So what I'm going to say here is instead of just, I think it's also in the create event, instead of just going for the player all the time, let's say um, var instance nearest oh, equals instance nearest to our x, y, so this is in the enemy. I want to look at object player, right? I'm going to say player nearest. And then next I'm going to say ally, player ally nearest. Okay. And we're going to look for ally. There we go. And next up we can say, okay, distance to object player nearest, okay, if distance object player nearest is less than the distance to object uh, player ally nearest, okay, hear me out, this is what we're going to do, if the player is closer than the closest enemy, we go for the player, otherwise, here we go, this is where the magic comes in, we're going to set our target to the ally nearest x and the ally nearest y because that's a that's a reference up there to that object. You know, is this saying that is it? Player nearest less than distance to player ally nearest. Wow, this is really going to spice things up. So this would mean that in our world where there are allies and enemies, the enemies will go for either us or an ally. Our allies will always go for the enemies, so the enemies will have two targets. Let's see. Will that explode? This is going to be interesting. Okay, we want someone quick. We don't care about shooting too much. I just want speed and health. Okay, here we go. Here we're in. I've pushed enter. There's an ally. Let's see if the enemy goes for that guy. I really want to see. I really want to see if they'll fight. They should fight. There they go. There they go. They're having a little battle. They're having a little battle over there. Oh, that is good stuff. You see, so they're going to either go for me or each other, which is perfect because we can't just have the entire goal flipping. Flip and flip. We can't have the entire game world just going, oh, they're disengaging already. Just going for me and just defending me because that's not very realistic. Oh, we got one. Oh, that guy's going to get owned because as they fly away, they're kind of vulnerable. This really worked out great. All right, so that about wraps up this video. I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. I'm really looking forward to the next part. Mm, I'm wondering what we should do. Please let me know in the comments below what you think we should add. If you like this video and want to support what I'm doing, please check out my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support as always. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Project files are in the description. And until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.